Hi, I'm Tom DiPetrello, and this is Extreme Costumes. Today, we're going to be working on a leg for a bumblebee. If you look down here, you'll see that I'm wearing a small stilt. And I've got a back end of a car. This is where I expect it to reside normally. But this is not really one costume. This is two. This is a car costume and a robot. So I have to be looking good as a robot. And I have to be a car. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to make your own giant robot costume. And part of that is the leg. And the leg itself has to be both a robot and a car. Walk around, it's a robot. There's a nice foot out front. As I take an angled step, it'll still conform with me. As I drag my foot along, it won't hit anything. But when I drop down to all fours, boom, it turns into a car mode. I lift my foot up again, and it pops back out. Not only does this jump up, but the foot drops down. Yet all the standard action you'd normally have from walking doesn't affect it. But when I go to car mode, boom. To take a little closer look. You see I've used cable instead of string. The cable's a lot stronger because there's a lot more pressure involved here. I had to support the piece, but that's going to follow the lines of where the foot goes. That cable is very important where it's placed. You'll see that it never hits anything. This arm drops all the way down without touching the stilt. And the car part drops all the way down, but still also does not hit the stilt or the support. When the leg goes up, it wraps around where my leg fits when it's in robot mode. When it drops down, at no point does that ever hit where my leg is. And of course, I'll have more stuff to fill in. The important part is to make sure that it looks like a car, because a robot can have its knee a little higher or a little bit lower and you wouldn't notice the difference, but a car is always the same. When I came down to the exact fulcrum distance, you'll notice that here this support, which is rigid and never moves, goes no farther along than the stilt foot. It's supported all the way across with a dual hinge. That means that as this gets hit, at any given angle, it's not going to flex or torque because your feet are going to be out there. They're going to hit lots of stuff. This piece here is supported at every given intersection, up and down, inside and out, all the way out to the outermost edges. This port is going to be supported the same way the rest of it is once I've mounted the leg. When you're putting your stilt together, make sure you remember that you have to get into it. That means you have to offer enough room to connect all your straps on it. I've remounted each one of my straps where I've taken the clip and moved it towards the in, um, outside of the leg. I'm sorry, towards the inside of the leg. The reason for that is my entry point is going to be from the side and the front. Normally when you're in sheet rocking stilts, you can get it straight from the top, but you don't have a costume in the way. So I've rotated everything around, moving the holes by approximately three inches. That way, when I'm in it, I can get it strapped over here instead of up over here because over here is going to have stuff in the way. I'm Tom DiPatron. This has been Extreme Costumes. Be sure to follow along for more progress on Facebook and Twitter and be sure and subscribe. Peace.